Hi there, this is Christian Me Landry here again with another Media Hub tutorial. So I'm going to talk to you about today is one of my favorite personal subjects, creating music with computers. What I'm going to show you how to do is take one of our MIDI keyboards, hook it up to a Media Hub iMac, use it in GarageBand, and make your own personal track. So let's take a look. The Media Hub MIDI keyboards have a 25 key velocity sensitive keyboard, 8 velocity sensitive drum pads, 8 programmable knobs, and also a USB cord for power and transfer. So here's how you plug it in. You take the USB cord, plug it into the side port on the keyboard itself, just like that. And then plug it into the back of your computer. Once it's plugged in, you'll end up seeing a red light at the top left showing that the power is on. All right, so now that we have our MIDI keyboard set up, let's open up GarageBand and see what we can do. For this video, I included a video feed of the keyboard so you can see me playing in real time, and also have made a pre-recorded session in GarageBand so we can play over that. Now, just to give you a quick tour of GarageBand, over here on the left are our instruments that we're working with, and these are the recorded tracks. As you can see, there are many loops that I used for this. Up at the top is the timeline that we're working with. Down here, you have your transport controls and also your counter. Over on the right is where you can edit your instruments. And then down here on the left is where you can add a new instrument. All right, so now I'm gonna hit play and we can hear the playback of the track. Here it is, just to give you a sense of what we're going to be working with. Okay, that's probably enough, so let's stop. So I now want to add more keyboards to this track, so let's go over to the instruments, and here's a synthesizer I already loaded up, and I'm going to play these keys right here. Okay, and as you'll hear, the computer is generating the notes that correspond to the keys that I'm playing. And I'll just build some chords out of these notes. So I don't want this track to come in right at the beginning of the song, so I'm going to scroll over to a little bit after this keyboard part. We'll click on the um, timeline and get our transport marker up in line, and that's where it's going to start recording. And then I'll select the synthesizer by clicking on it. So when I play the keyboard, it's going to play that instrument. And I'll hit record. And here we go. All right, and you can uh, see up here that's recording the new track as it's going along. So when I play, here are the notes, and you can see them showing up on the screen in real time. One thing you might notice is there's a little bit of latency between when I'm hitting the actual keys and when it's playing in the program, and that's really just because of the recording software I'm using for this tutorial, and I'll show you how to clear that up in a minute. I'm actually going to cut this recording down to a loop, so that's probably good enough right here. And I'll hit stop, and now we have our new track. All right, and now if we scroll back to the beginning of where the track was recorded and click on the timeline, we can listen to it back. So, yep, it's playing back, and you can see down here at the bottom, um, here are the MIDI notes themselves. And this is actually all stored as information, so one of the great things about GarageBand and other digital audio workstations is that you can go in and edit the MIDI notes one by one. So say there was this little tiny note back here, I can click on it and delete it. And now it's not in the track anymore. Another powerful feature of programs like this is using quantization on MIDI notes. Now what this does is it allows us to line up the notes with particular parts of the measure. So if I click on this, it's going to move them back so that they will line up on one beat per each bar. And what this does is it effectively can um, fix any issues with latency or if you miss a beat. So if I play this back, 
you should be able to hear the difference in that the notes are now falling much better in line with the loops that I had set. All right, now before I show you how to use the drum pads, I'm gonna do some quick cleanup here and also extend some of the tracks. All right, and that should be good. So I've shown you how to use the keyboard on this controller, but what I'm gonna show you next is how to use the drum pads, which are located up here. So I selected a drum kit within GarageBand, and right now I'm just testing out what the pads do. And I think I like that clap, so I'm gonna work with that one. So just like before, I'm gonna set my cursor to where I wanna start recording. I'll hit record. The track will start recording, as you can see on the screen. And I'll start playing. And there's that latency again affecting the triplets, but we can clean that up again in a minute. And I'll just go to the end of the track here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do some quick cleanup and quantize those drum beats and then add a phaser on top of it. All right, so let's hear our track. All right, so you should be able to hear that the notes are quantized now and they're done to a 16th note just because it's doing kind of rapid hits. And there was the phaser on it too. Starting to sound pretty good. And this is almost entirely done with one of our MIDI keyboards from the Media Hub. All right, so that's it. If you wanna check out any tutorials on your other Media Hub equipment, you can go to the link below. Or you can contact us with any questions you have at dps at providence.edu or at asklibrarian at lists.providence.edu. Okay, so until next time, I'm Christian Marie Landry, signing off.